Good evening, Manuel. Good evening. Hello, good evening. We're going to wait just one or two more minutes. Teacher, I, I have a problem with platform. In the uh, homework. Which homework? With the platform? Yes, the platform. In the homework yesterday. Okay, okay, we're going to check that in a few minutes, okay? Okay. Good, good. Okay, so welcome to the class. Let's check hello, hello. Okay, so uh, yesterday we had a homework, as we were saying, and yes, as I was telling you, uh, sometimes in that one we have to be careful, right? So we're going to check that because sometimes when we need to enter some information, like typing something, sometimes. Uh, we need to be careful with that one. Let me just check that one. Oh, let me see. Come, it's this one. Okay, and uh, on this exercise, let me ask you: Did you enter only the missing part or the whole sentence? Missing part. Missing part. Okay, you need to enter the whole sentence. That is the first thing. Oh, no, all sentence. Sorry, oh, sentence. Yes, 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 all sentence. And, and I, um, in the part, what's the name of the, the Okay. Yeah. And the rest of the, the, rest of the people, did you do that as well? Anyways, we're going to check right now. I found it. Okay, so here is the exercise, okay? So it says, read the following statements, just the information provided, and type the complete sentence. So that is the first thing. Type the complete sentence. And remember that we're going to uh, use the uh, to, and then the noun, and then the infinitive. So do you remember what is the infinitive? Two is basic form of basic a verb. With two, uh -huh. with very two. good. So the first one says video conference. Okay, let's check into that one. Video conferences of offer employees too many. So maybe that is the problem that we have to use many because opportunities is uh, yesterday's. Remember, do you remember that we were saying that if you are going to use uh if there is a word after two that is a noun mm -hmm. we need to use too many or too much or too few or too little right mm -hmm. so in this case since opportunities is not a verb and it's not an adverb we're going to use um many so that is it too many opportunities to get to get uh -huh, distracted and the period that will be the first one, okay? So the other one, it should be a video conferences present too many 
because risks is in plural, right? Risks. Too many risks to waste valuable time due to technical issues. So too many risks that will be to waste. In the first, in the first is to is T O O. In exactly. the second is T O only. Yeah, the thing is that two, uh, the first one is going to be like uh, T O O, and the other oh, one is the okay. T O O. It's my error, I think. Yeah, that would be it. All of those are exactly like that. So the other one, number three, it says there are too many places to visit. Oh, okay, in this case, it's taking only that part. It's like an error. There are too many places to visit. <laughs> so let me check if I enter before. Teacher, uh -huh. I, I had a problem with this, this one because uh, the different way to do it uh, does, uh, doesn't work. Yeah, it's an error, okay? So I'm checking into that one right here. If you enter, uh, let me see. Uh, the, the rest of the sentence doesn't, doesn't work. It doesn't work. So in this yeah. one, there is an error. Yes. Uh, so what you need to enter is, there are too many places to visit. Only but, that. Yeah, the teacher. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, but in the in the end of the platform, yes, all the sentence. Exactly. So mm -hmm. that is it. In this part only. To visit. Uh, to visit. In this part only. Period. Only to visit. Yeah. It's uh, an error. Okay. It's an error. Okay. Yeah. And the number four, there are too many problems to solve in this office. That is correct. So to solve, right? That would be it. Do you have any questions about this? No, teacher. It's I okay. In this night. Very good, perfect. So that will be it. Now, um, the class of tonight is this one, okay? And this is, okay, for today, also we need to be careful, okay? We need to be careful. It says complete the following sentences and information. Remember to use two plus the adjective plus the infinity. So remember that in this case, we are not going to use too many. It's going to be only two, okay? It is too hot to go or it is too good to be or it is too anything like that. So two, the adjective, and then the infinite, to, to go, to be, or to do anything like that, okay? Uh, if by any chance you have problems with this, uh, let me know, and we can check that in the class of... All the sentences or only part? I we, guess this is all the sentences as well. But, but, oh, it doesn't say... It doesn't what? But yeah, but almost always it's all the sentences. So let's try all the sentences, okay? Yeah. Um, Perfect. Uh, Okay. okay, so this is for tonight, and we're going to check about the attendance, of course. Ada Patricia Linares Galdamez. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Alejandra Michelle Hueso Naje. Present, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Perfect. Edwin Alexander Ayala Erazo. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Good evening. Good evening. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Hello, present. Good evening. Good evening. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Maria Elena Guadalupe Piñate Escobar. Present. Good evening. Good In evening. a few minutes, 
on my camera teacher. Okay, that's fine. No worry. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Good evening, present. Good evening. Silvia Suleima Rodríguez de González. Present, teacher. Good. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present, teacher. Good, Good. evening, everybody. Good evening. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. I present. Good. Walter Mauricio Morales Arauco. Present. Good evening. Good evening. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Perfect. So, uh, remember that for Friday we have the homework of the words, but also what we're going to do as the homework in general is this. You are going to teach the class something, anything that you want to teach, whatever, okay? If it's too complicated, you can show pictures or anything like that. Uh, but that is the, the homework for this Friday. I mean, if you want to teach her to cook something, you can give the recipe. If you want to to teach how to dance something or to do whatever, okay? Of course, in English, that will be the one, okay? Do you have any questions for that? How many minutes? Mm, around six minutes is also fine. Six okay. minutes is good Thank enough. You, Perfect. Any other question regarding the homework for this incoming Friday? Okay, good. So we're going to watch a few Sorry, teacher. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, go teacher. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I don't listen very well the uh, the topic. The is uh, for... free? Yeah, or it's only a specific. No, it's free. You are going to teach anything, anything that you want to present to the class and teach how to do something. So. Uh, and it's about whatever you want to do. For example, if you want to teach how to sing songs, how to play the guitar, how to, I don't know, how to speak in public, how to, I don't know, levitate. I always wanted to levitate, but I believe that is not possible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Any topic okay. that you want to teach, I mean, financing, um, something funny, I don't know. Whatsoever you want to teach, okay? Okay, teach. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. It's a pleasure. Okay. So today we're going to watch a few videos and then we're going to practice. I mean, the topic is very easy. It's the the one that we checked yesterday. We checked the whole week for this uh, grammar. Now we're going to start with the book and then we're going to watch a few videos and discuss about that one, okay? So let me just get there and start with unit number 34 book. All right. Okay, so the name of this unit is video conferences and teleconferences, okay? The first question is kind of silly because we are in a video conference, but it says, have you been part of a video conference or a video call? I believe that you do, right? Yes, we are. Eric, what is what is the difference between video conferences and teleconferences? It's kind of the same. I mean, it's just a different word for the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe the main uh, the main uh, difference might be that in the video conference we interact with each other. In the teleconferences, sometimes there is one person speaking, and you just ask at the end of the uh, of the speech, let's say. But I mean, it's because it's in the video and many other things, right? So the second one says, what are some communication difficulties participants can experience in a video conference? What do you think? The problems with the internet. That is one of the most uh, common. The, oh, the how do you say the, the noise? Maybe, I don't know. 
noise around the, the place or the, yeah, maybe the noise. Mm -hmm. They are more distractors. Yes, many difficult. Yes. yes. Okay, okay, for so. example, uh, if it's uh, if it's raining, teacher, I consider uh, the communication is not fluent because uh, some noises um, in other parts uh, may be uh, the internet uh, down. So yes, all of those are are difficult. Sometimes, I mean, um, I always tell my uh, my son, in everything we have good things and bad things, right? Yeah. And uh, yes, the noise sometimes is a problem, right? And it's not your fault. Sometimes you are there taking class and somebody is uh, selling bread on the street, right? So, <laughs> can or do the that. dog is barking, or uh, the dog is barking. The dog, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. I don't pay attention, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so, the yeah, internet oh, connection oh. is also a big problem. I'm sorry, go ahead, maybe. Imagine, imagine when some somebody is speaking, uh, suddenly the, the seller in the car was the papa, the papa, the papa, the papa. Yeah, 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 yeah that's true. <laughs> yeah, that very happens. early in the morning. If this happens to me. <laughs> Yeah. On Friday, the tamales and right. <laughs> oh, you're possible... way, way, I'm going to buy some tamales. <laughs> oh, it's possible that your neighborhood had a party? Yes. This is <laughs> yes, <true>. in the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, uh, we have the, the, the we conference are, we and go to the party. The party. <laughs> <laughs> and you know i think i think that uh, if you you need to prepare for a video conferences because you need sometimes you need really good uh, devices you know to speak and to listen and sometimes if you do not if you don't have the the adequate device you know to support the communication it could be a problem too that is true. That is true. So sometimes, well, it's an investment. Sometimes it's not possible for some families, but if you are able to, that is something that we do. I mean, for example, I sometimes uh, see some people that they wear headsets like this one, and these are just for the class, right? I mean, uh, it's not like the regular ones. So it's important. Sometimes also family, right? I mean, uh, is I mean, if you have your kids running, it is very difficult to say the kids. Don't gel, they, they need to play, right? So sometimes we hear some noise. Internet connection sometimes is a big problem. So um, depending where you are or depending if it's raining or depending on many things, right? Sometimes it's a problem. Imagine that you don't have energy. Uh, sometimes that happens. Sometimes when it's raining, some things happen. And, and yeah, the other one, somebody said that, the distractors, right? So you are at home and you say, I'm going to go and cook something for me, but that takes 10 minutes and you didn't listen to class. Um, that's why sometimes in for they ask for you to turn on the camera. So you interact in a different way. But sometimes it's not very uh, it's, it's difficult, right, to, to have the camera all the time on. Many things happen. So there are some difficulties when you are in a video conferences. Of course, there are some good things. So what good things you can bring from uh, video conferences. Teacher, mm -hmm. the video calls were made during the pandemic, but for a little over 15 years, some multinational companies were already pouring them into use. But with the pandemic, the video calls become become Fashionable. 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 They, uh, they do have some advantage such as Eng English class. Uh, for example, in my case, I don't like I don't like it. I do by going to face to face English class because now for me is 
very nice to receive the the class by video calls. And I personally love them this kind of method. If if it's important to have an assignment one place to take the video calls and not suffer interruption uh, as example that family or dog and cat for example in my case <laughs> but, uh, but the interruptions always are present in so in, in some time uh, video calls very good so you're right i mean uh it was it was very popular the video companies only for businesses right for meetings when you have meetings with people from other countries it was very popular but now because of the pandemic i mean uh, it was very popular and now yeah I, we, I believe that that is happening i mean it's convenient right you don't mm -hmm. it, it, imagine that if you have to go to a classroom and it's raining and you're try, tired from home and you are hungry and you didn't buy anything to eat and stay there until 10 p.m. I mean, that that is difficult. Probably it won't be possible. Probably it will be on Saturdays and Sundays classes, right? But this allow people, that this permits that from your house, very convenient, even if you're sick, even if you're tired, even if you're hungry, you can eat something there. It, it's very convenient. So, um, Yes, three, three years ago for me was very impact to think that I can take to video call an English class because it was a, my first experience. But now for me is the very nice uh, method. Very good. So, yeah, it's very convenient and it's... Uh... It's good for many reasons. I mean, just to be there at home and receive your classes or to contact somebody in a video conference. It's a very nice thing. It's very convenient. Now, teacher, um, it's very convenient, right? But requires more discipline, personal discipline. Good. That is true. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. I believe that now, um is possible is possible learning to learn everything to learn everything but depending of your discipline and your your how do you say voluntad teacher uh, your willingness yes with your willingness yes that is very good, perfect. Thank you, Anna Salmi. Uh, Susana. In this topic, I feel this advantage uh, with people more younger because they know more about technology. And sometimes I I do many mistakes and this is, is penoso. Ashamed. Ashamed. Or embarrassing. Embarrassing. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I mean, to be honest with you, um, I used to teach. I mean, I have a lot of experience teaching and I used to teach teach only here in person, right? Uh, and when I saw the opportunity here in Insaforp and I took it, the first thing that I thought is, okay, I have to check some things. I mean, I know how to use Meet because I work at Google and some other things, but I never use Zoom. And I never used before the breakout rooms because, I mean, uh, in work meetings, you never go to break up rooms, right, to discuss things. So it's everything there. So I need, uh, I learned. So that is a, an advantage. I saw that as an opportunity. It's an opportunity for me to learn. I have to learn how to do certain things. For example, when you have to present that little thing, you need to know how to do that, right? And when you do that two or three times, then you are very familiar to that one. So it's a very nice it's an opportunity to I think if I might, if, if I might, uh, I think it is a good opportunity to learn because you 
really have access to everything you want to learn and to research. And but uh, I am I don't know if I am too old on on I mean too old for uh, teaching uh, via internet because you know I love the human contact. I love uh, to to have this contact with people and you know uh, to show my my emotions by teaching uh, and sometimes uh, it is really difficult you know to take care uh, of to take care of the of the emotion of your students uh, here through the screen you know and i i would say that I continually prefer to teach presential. <laughs> yeah, it's different. Uh, go ahead. Uh, those who suffer the most impact from this change were the children. I think because the change was very hard for them. Uh, I think that uh, for they was a distraction that video calls because they were not 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 was one hundred percent in class until they managed to adapt for for use is for for use is more easy is easier because we we know what we we want. But in the case of the children, is very was very complicated. Now they it is is very easy too. Yeah, that is true. I remember. Yeah, probably for certain ages of kids, it was difficult, and also for the parents. I mean, if the kids they were in first grade, for example, and they turn on the camera, the, the parents has to be there next to the kids, right, taking the class, explaining things. So it was difficult. That part, I believe, it was kind of difficult. Marilena. Thank you. Um, I am speaking in many things about the video conference, but um, uh, to uh, many things good. Um, because uh, this was, I can take the class, but in other way, I don't know. I, I don't place and drive in far away from my house because when I connected, um, I arrived at my house. Uh, because my work is in San Jose and I say San Jose at the night and it is difficult for me to uh, go to uh, play in the city. But, but in, the gaps is evidence because because many people don't can use and many people for money and for generation can use it. Um, I see in communities iPhone, but the people only uh, how to say only for calling. Yeah. <laughs> For different reason, but you can stay in place 
because I stay in my house in a moment I can stop the camera and say something to my nephew. Uh, it is good, uh, but you need, I remember in pandemic, horrible because I am staying from my computer. 7 a.m. and I am turn off my computer 5 a.m. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> yeah. But good things and bad things. Okay. Thanks. Very good. Perfect. Thank you for your opinion. You are right. I mean, imagine right now we have people in different cities of the of the country. So that is that is a very good opportunity that in the past it was not possible. Um, imagine, imagine that I am Santa Ana, and imagine that I say to you, yeah, the, the class is not going to be in video conference anymore. You need to come to Santa Ana every night. My goodness, that is not good, right? <laughs> Maybe for the ones that live in Santa Ana, I say, yes, it's good, <laughs> but not for the rest of the class. So there are good things and there are some difficulties. The good thing is that the difficulties, we can handle that one. I mean, for example, I was uh, in other classes, I was telling some students that it's sometimes at some points in the house, uh, the internet is, is stronger. So if you identify where it is stronger, maybe it's going to be easier, right? Or if you have a little room uh, and get a void for the noise of the family, that is also a very good idea. So there are things that we can do for the difficulties. So. Uh, as we were discussing, good things and bad things in both, right? By now we're here, we don't know where it's going to be the next one. Okay, so let's move on. There are some uh, things here. For example, background noise. You know what is that one? What is background noise? Yes, noise like dark, children's... Uh... Someone speaking when you are when you need to listen, you know. Very good. So that is it. Nowadays, also some headsets they come with a, a reduction of noise. So uh, that is very good. Technology also gives you that one. So and Zoom, you know, I don't know if you know, but you can go to the to the configuration and you can set that with the reduction of noise as well. And so. That is a very good thing about it. What is teleconferencer? Someone that speak do for during the conference. People. Very good. That is it. So it's the person that is modulating, right? The, the, the meeting, let's say. What is a sign posting? Sign posting is to to make marks, you know, when you are explaining something, then you put some colors, some notes that can make remarkable something that, that you are is... teaching or Perfect. speaking about. That is the one. Very good. The last one uh, is something that we discussed, but we didn't call it like that. To break up. What is to break up? The free time during the call. Uh, yeah, it's when you are speaking, it's like this. Imagine that I'm speaking and then I'm frozen in the oil and you don't know what I'm saying. Right? So that is to break up. Yeah, you're breaking up, you say. And that is normal in, in the internet connections. I mean, when when that is a problem, I mean, that happens. So we experience that all the time, depending on where you are. Okay, we're not going to check that yet, but attendee, what is attendee? We are attendee to your class. <laughs> Perfect. That is it. The attendees are the participants in the class. The right? participants. Mm -hmm. Good. Landline. What is the landline? I don't know. Land. Okay. Um, that is a good one. A landline is a phone that is not a cell phone. I mean, it's a phone that you have in your house. Those that we don't use anymore, right? So when you dial somebody and the 
the phone in the house ring. So that is allowed. Good. And we have link technologies. Do you have an idea what might be link technologies? Link technologies is a, is a method for 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 producing for quality to achieve quality uh, during throw processes. I don't know if it means here. Yeah, something like that one. So it's like process that you can use using some technology, right? To get framed. What is to get framed? Okay, there is an easy one. That is when somebody puts you on the loop. So for example, I mind that I say, okay, my bae is going to explain what is to get framed. And she gets framed, so she gets exposed. So she's the one that is going to, to present something, to say something to the boss. Okay. And I know that you like the grammar. So here we are. How to use two plus nouns, adjectives, adverbs, and infinitive. This is something we checked yesterday. We will just review that today. Okay. So we have a little chart here. And let's see what's going on. Susana Hernandez, could you please help me reading the chart? Okay, teacher. And another? Is yeah. That? Yeah. Okay. Another part of the infinitives are used is alongside nouns, adjectives, and adverbs that are preceded by two, usually to express a negative meaning. First, plus noun, plus infinitive. Continue? Yes, please. Okay. Example, video conference of employees, many opportunities to get distracted. Video conference present to many risks to wait valuable time due to technical issues. B, plus adjectives, plus infinitive. In a recent survey to American managers, they reported that video conferencing is not helpful to keep employees focused. Just like face to face communication, video conference body language is too relevant to neglect it. C. Plus adverb plus infinitive. The object check was done too quickly. Not Mr. Rivera channel was not working. Properly. Expert recommend not to, to, to load it to allow your colleagues to get a better reception of your message. Very good, perfect. Thank you. So, this is a review of what we uh, checked yesterday. Okay. Good thing is that here are the answers for the exercise. So, so the first one says two plus noun plus the infinity. Okay. And the first part is also important. Remember that two most likely is going to press negative meaning, meaning that too much, not good, right? So that's why we need to be very careful when you use to and very. So if you say you are very, uh, I don't know, very fast, that is good. Hey, you're very fast. But if you say you are too fast, that is not good. Oh, you are too fast. I don't like it. So the first one uh, says the example, video conferences offer employees too, and then many, because this is a noun, okay? Too many opportunities to get distracted. And this is the infinity, as we checked already. Video confidences present too many risks to waste valuable time due to technical issues. Again, it's the same thing, right? Uh, what is everybody due to? Do you know what is that? House limit of, of the house. time okay is, is the reason the reason, the reason. Uh, very good is the reason why something is happening right very good okay the part b says two plus adjective and infinitive so in this one remember that we are not going to use many it's not possible okay and there are two examples in a recent survey to American managers, 
they reported that video conferencing is not too helpful to keep employees focused. So here, as you can see, we don't use many because this is an additive. So it's not possible, right? So not too helpful to keep. And these two are different, right? Two and two. The second example says, just like in face-to-face -face communication, in video conferences, body language is too relevant to neglect it. But Again, Eric, uh -huh. excuse me, in this second example, uh, this uh, two doesn't express a, a negative meaning. It's more is, positive. It's yeah. too relevant to neglect it. Yeah, it's too important, right? So that is true. So it's not always that it's going to be uh, negative. Uh, in the most of the cases, it's going to be like that. But sometimes, I mean, yes, you can. Uh, you need to check uh, the uh, the meaning of everything that you want to say. So depending on that one, it's going to be like this. Too important to neglect. Good. And in the part C, two plus adverb plus infinitive. Remember that we said just that the adjective describes the noun and the adverb describes the verb or other adjectives or other adverbs. So that is the difference. So the audio check was done too quickly to notice Mrs. Roberta's channel was not working properly. Okay, again, we don't use too many or too much here, okay? Experts recommend not to talk too loudly to allow your colleagues to get a better reception of your message. Interesting here uh, that in the first part, if this verb, if the first verb is the one that is going to be negative, we're going to use not to talk to, okay? Okay, but if it's on the second one, it's going to be to don't allow, for example. Good, uh, do you have any questions about this? I need practice a lot, teacher. Let's practice then. Here is the exercise. So we are going to practice. Complete the sentences. Use two plus the appropriate order and form of the words in parentheses. And we are going to compare at the end. So there are a few of those. There are six. And you are going to see there. Uh, in the parentheses, we're going to see what we're going to use, okay? So I'm going to give you a few minutes, and then you can, we're going to check together, okay?
Okay. Okay, has everybody finished or do you need more time? More time. Okay, I will give you a few more minutes. Very good. So let's check. Who wants to share number one? Me, teacher. Okay, please go ahead. There must be a technical problem going on. Her voice is too soft to be heard. Perfect. Too soft to be heard. Nice. Who wants to be number two? Me, teacher. I can. During the video conference, Mr. Park was too distracted, playing solitaire to answer the supervisor's questions. Very good. So during the video conference, Mr. Pass was too distracted, playing solitaire to answer the supervisor's questions. Nice. Manuel, number three. Face-to-face -face meeting, unlike video conference, are not too effective to build meaningful business relationships very good perfect that's correct and uh, number four who wants to share number four me teacher okay the um, accountant's body language was too distracting to allow a young, uh, an, any young to Anyone. follow his message very good perfect so the accountant's body language was too distracting to allow anyone to follow this message. <laughs> that happens sometimes. People sometimes they move on that way. Okay, number five. Who wants to share number five? Me, hey, teacher. Very good. So let's check number five. Mr. Guerra's tie was too colorful to be ignored by everyone in the video conference. Very good, perfect. That also happens sometimes. <laughs> okay, and unless unless the, the 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 presenter have the attention for the for public, <laughs> you know sometimes what uh, what they do is that on purpose they do something like that so they can get uh the attraction of some point right. So sometimes it can be something like that. <laughs> maybe teacher, maybe this. It's a strategy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything is possible. If you do it like that, sometimes it's good, right? So, huh? Depending on what, you, sometimes it's only passion, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, number six, who wants to share number six? Me, teacher. Okay. I come on use at video conference is the fact the participation engine to uh, deep it. 
in the other activity to be fully uh, available for, for, for discussion. Very good, perfect, thank you. So a common issue at video conferences is the fact that participants engage too deeply in other activities to be fully available for discussion. Nice. So you see, if we practice, everything goes well. So let's move on. Uh, we're still not going to go through that, but we're going to go to uh, columns. Columns are a very important part of writing, okay? So columns is like, let me show you. What is it here? Okay, so let's read about that one and then we're going to check it. Out. So, how to use columns, part one. And it says, look at the examples in the box, then complete the exercise below. It's a little bit long, but we're going to be able to check it with that one, definitely. So, let's see. Um, what's going to read? Alejandra Michelle, is it possible for you? Not possible. Let's see then. Edwin, Alexander. Of course. Um, a paragraph is a group of sentences that develops a main idea. A paragraph can stand by itself as a complete piece of writing, or it can be a section of a longer piece of writing like a, like an essay. The well-developed paragraph has a topic sentence. The topic sentences expresses the main idea of the paragraph, keeping in mind the titles are usually single words or short phrases. But the topic sentences of paragraph must always be a complete sentences. Example, number one, Lego is at the top corporate social responsible companies of this year with 74.4 points having jumped from its fifth place last year. While a topic uh, uh, while a topic sentences presents the main idea of paragraph. All the other all the other sentences serve the purpose to explain, extend, or support these general sentences. These other sentences are supporting detail, details. They are used as pieces of evidence by writings to make the main idea of the paragraph convincing and interesting to the readers. Examples. Number two, in, a, in an analysis done by financial expert, Lego beat all other companies in the perception that it behaves ethically, conducts business fairly, operates transparently, transparently, protects the environment, and supports worthy causes. Two, Lego has embraced corporate social responsibility from top to the bottom, says Chief Research Officer Stephen Han Griffiths. A paragraph also needs to have a concluding sentence, which has one main purpose, to give the reader a sense of having a right to satisfying ending of the topics discussed. Legot's building the change that sustainable material center initiatives and its partnership with the World Wildlife Fund are part of the Danish toy company's push for sustainability and corporate social responsibility. Perfect, thank you very much. Okay, so this, uh, actually this, this class is a very important class uh, because it's going to teach you how to write a paragraph. So the paragraph have different parts and this is uh, the way that you write an essay. And as you may remember, 
when you finish all the advanced modules, I mean the six modules of the advanced, um, all of you, you are going to do a certification, a global certification that is valid around the world. And that is the TOEFL, okay? And one part of the TOEFL is to write an essay, okay? But in English, to write an essay is not only to write about something. I mean, you need to do it in this way. If you don't do it in this way, even when the grammar is correct, it's not going to be valid. It's not going to be good. So that's why this is a very important topic, okay? Because this is like the beginning for you to, well, not the beginning because we check about the period and the article V, uh, some other things that are related to this. But uh, this is a very important because it's the structure that you need to follow so you can write one paragraph or many paragraphs in an essay, okay? So, a, a paragraph, let's check it together. A paragraph is a group of sentences that develops a main idea. So that is the first thing. A paragraph or a group of paragraphs sometimes in an essay uh, is like a group of sentences, but the idea is the same. It's a principal idea throughout all the essay. That is very, very important. A paragraph can stand by itself as a complete piece of writing, or it can be a section of a longer piece of writing like an essay. So the first part is the one that we usually do. So for example, if I say, write a paragraph about your daily routine, you write the paragraph and that's it. That is just a complete piece of writing. But sometimes a paragraph can be a section of a longer piece. So that means that a paragraph is part of other paragraphs together, and together they they create the essay. Okay, so that different part, but all all this is going to have different parts. So the well developed paragraph has a topic set. So the first thing that you are going to introduce is a topic sentence in every paragraph or in every essay. Okay, so. The topic sentence expresses the main idea of the paragraph. So you read the topic sentence and you know what is everything about. It's like an introduction for the whole essay, for the whole paragraph. Okay? So keep in mind that titles are usually single words or short phrases. But, so I mean, this is a contrast. Uh, sometimes like this, uh, how to use columns, that is like a title, very short, very concise. But in the topic sentences, it's going to be different. In the topic sentences of a paragraph will always be a complete sentence, a complete idea. So for example, Lego is a top corporate social responsible company of this year with 74.4 points, having jumped from its fifth place last year. So if you read this sentence, you, you see that it's not only a title, it's a topic sentence because it's presenting you something about this company that has increased uh, in many points being a social responsible company. So that company, they really care about the community, they do many things and they improved. I mean, in the past they were good, but now they are better in social responsibility. So you understand this from the topic, okay? Any questions so far before we continue? Good, clear as of chat. Let's move on. Is this similar the, the rule of this in the, gram in the Spanish grammatical grammar? Yes, for formal writing, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So for formal writing, it's going to be exactly like this. You are going to have an introduction. The real problem is that sometimes when we write in English or in Spanish, we don't have a structure. We write and we present something and the other people understand. But for the test, we need to remember the structure. That is very Okay. And then it says, while a topic sentence presents the main idea of paragraph, 
all the other sentences, meaning all the other parts of the paragraph or the paragraphs, serve the purpose to explain, extend, or support this general sentence. So you have the, the topic sentence, and the rest is going to be a support of the main idea, of the principal one, of the topic sentence. Okay? These other sentences are supporting details. They are used as pieces of evidence by writers to make the main idea of the paragraph convincing and also interesting to the readers. And we have two other paragraphs that support the first one. So, examples it says, in an analysis done by financial experts, Lego bet all other companies and the perception that it behaves ethically, conducts business fairly, operates transparently, protects the environment, and supports worthy causes. So that is the first part of this paragraph. And the second is also another idea that supports the main idea. Lego has embraced corporate social responsibility from top to bottom, says Chief Research Officer Stephen Ham Griffiths. So two ideas to support the topic, the topic sentence. But this is the last part. A paragraph also needs to have a concluding sentence. I mean, you need to close the essay, right? Which has one main purpose, to give the reader a sense of having arrived to a satisfying ending of the topic discussed. So this is the closing. Legos build the chance and sustainable material centers initiatives and its partnership with the World Wildlife Fund are part of the Danish toy company's push for sustainability and corporate social responsibility. So in this case, we, we have the whole thing, the topic sentence, the supporting details, and the conclusion. And then it's complete the whole thing. Do you have any questions? Teacher, according the the topic of uh, of this uh, no, unit, uh, what is uh, columns? Well, that is a mistake on the book. Columns are uh, punto y coma and separations. <laughs> Yeah, teacher. That's why I, I have a question because uh, when I I I see not yeah. the of the yeah, thing. it's not part of it definitely. But I mean that that happens, you know. Sometimes people are tired when creating these kind of books. But I mean the paragraph is very important. So. Okay, very good. So. Uh, this is the exercise for this part. Read and organize the paragraph below using the model above. Topic sentence, supporting details, concluding sentence. So there are four. The first one is going to be the topic sentence. And the number two is going to be repeated in two paragraphs. And then the number three is going to be only one. I will give you a few minutes for you to read and then organized out, okay?
You finish already, of course. Okay, so their goal is to benefit their guests, employees, and businesses while making the company a desirable place to work through their consumer social responsibility efforts. What number is that? Number four. I, I four. Four. Everybody agrees? No, I think it is four the three. three. Uh -huh. the they will be in a company. Mm -hmm. So their goal is to benefit their guests. Employees. Let's let's do it in a different way, okay? Uh, which one do you believe is the number one? Uh, the third one. Three, the third one. Uh, the third one. This one. So the Walt Disney yes. Company is one of the largest and most well-known companies. To the topic. topic. You are right. You are right. That is it. That is the number one. Okay. So what is number two? As the largest media. As the largest media. Okay. The last one uh, and the second one, you say. Those? Everybody agrees? Let's read it, okay? Let's analyze together. Uh, the second one, it says, as the largest media and entertainment conglomerate in the world, and aside from its constant imagineering, Disney has tremendous responsibility to give back to those who have helped it become a powerful day that it is today. Yeah, that is number two. And let's read the last one. Volunteerism is a major focus for Disney, offering free tickets for a million. Yeah, this is number two as well. Yes, I, I you know, Eric, if, mm -hmm. if you try to, to make correct the, the four, uh, the four uh, parts, it could also be that uh, after the, the first one, yeah, you can introduce what is the role of Walt Disney. The third one is, is the largest media and the fourth one, the volunteerism. Mm, well, yeah, you are writing some points, but tell me, uh, we were analyzing that at the end, at the end, all these things, they have a goal, right? And okay. the goal is to benefit their guests. So that would be the, the thing that is like the closer. But so at the end, uh, the tickets and everything that we do is because they want to benefit guests, employees, and businesses. So it's a very good closing. In this but case, it's, teacher, mm -hmm. it's complicated, the yeah. unique answer. Yeah. Because uh, each paragraph is possible has, um, the paragraph has, um, the same mean related, related to the detail, for example, and depend the the what is your goal in the structure of the what is the, the ideas the ideas what is your intention intention related to the each paragraph. This is my opinion. I believe yeah. that. There, there are different combinations in these cases. In this case, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, actually, uh, that is not correct because in, in the structure in grammar, I mean, for example, imagine that we are doing a test in English and you have this. There is only one answer. It's not possible. I mean, the only ones that can be number two in different parts, it will be the supporting ideas. But in tests, I mean, sometimes what you say is, is possible depending on how do you feel it, how do you understand things, but not in a test. In a test, yes, yes, there should be a is. conclusion. Uh -huh. Yes, so, but in, in the, in the but, uh, for example, the, the concluding sentence mm -hmm. is easier when the paragraph, the, the end, the, the final paragraph is in conclusion, is is more uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. evident. It's more. Oh yeah, more, that is going to be very yeah. easy. But... Or finally, yeah. or finally, oh, finally yeah. Yeah. this is a when, conclusion. When you when you are getting new knowledge, man, to how to structure a text for the TOEFL a test, you 
you get some ideas how to order the paragraph and how to conclude it with supporting words like finally, in order to, or something like that. Yes. But I, I know it is very basic how to structure a, a, ¿cómo se dice? a, a text. Yes. Okay. A yeah, text. you are right. I mean, how, to, how to structure an essay. Yeah, that, but that is that is my point at the end. So yes, it's possible to say finally in conclusion, but that yeah. that won't be a challenge in a test, right? I mean, in a, <laughs> right. in a real test, in a, I mean, when you are learning, yes, sometimes it's possible and you can do it. I mean, if you, whenever you are doing or creating the essay, it's possible for you to say, and uh, in conclusion, finally, or um, as a result of everything that we discussed, that is possible. But if it's like presenting like that one, uh, yeah, when you are learning, you will be able to see certain things, but in a test, in a real test, uh, definitely they are not going to. But They're not going to do that one, right? <laughs> in this topic, teacher, mm -hmm. is complicated because, in my opinion, I need to more skill related to the good reduction. Reduction, right? That is it. The problem is that, uh, well, you the know, that here... the, 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 the basic structure, maybe, maybe, say, ah, uh, yes, yes, okay, the, so. The, basic structure for good for to be good writer yeah you are right <laughs> uh, the real problem with these courses is that i mean we see one topic one day and that's it right so yes in the future we're going to see other things but all the other things and this is very important all the other things that we're going to check about paragraphs and many other things are going to be related with this stuff with this really more okay i totally understand i mean sometimes i remember that sometimes we check phrase others and we check phrase others in one night only and we need to practice more right we need so well, i mean we do that one i mean the course is going to be five years right so uh, we need to to continue uh, another thing that we can do uh if you want what i can do for you is i can look for some other uh, examples some other links so you can continue by yourself, right? I totally understand that we need more information. Sometimes we need more practice. And that is true, not only in this topic, but in many topics, right? Sometimes there are topics that are strange because are, are not the same as the uh, as in Spanish. So we really need to, to more go more into it. Sadly, it is not the case because I mean, the program is designed to move on, right? But definitely in our free time, we can continue learning and checking that one. Good, good. So, yeah, I'm sorry. In conclusion, uh -huh. what is the order? Yeah, order? it's going to be like that. The last one is going to be their goal is to benefit their guests. That will be it. Yeah. The other one, the number two, it could be either or. No, it, it's not important which order. And the first one definitely is the Walt Disney Company. Okay. Okay. Good, okay. good. Huh? And the, 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 this is the number one, the, the, the main topic. Yeah, the main topic is the Walt Disney Company. The, the last one is the number one. Their goal is to benefit. Yeah, their goal is to benefit their guests. Okay. That it will be the closest. The yeah. number two? Well, well, the number two, it can be volunteerism or as largest media. I uh, prefer, to be honest with you, as the largest media and Oh, okay. that, that, that's the one that I would set as number three. But number since four. both are supporting idea, they can be either or. It, does, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Very good. So um, very nice. Now we're going to, uh, well, we have a few more minutes. I'm going to, well, today and tomorrow, we're going to check a few videos so we can discuss about some other topics. Because as I was telling you, these topics are kind of, fast right so we are going to check and discuss about it. so we're going to see the first video and as usual check about the pronunciation check about the words that they use and you are going to provide opinions and comments at the end. all right here we go i really like this the four videos are from ted so i hope you like it
the language I'm speaking right now is on its way to becoming the world's universal language, for better or for worse. Let's face it: it's the language of the internet, it's the language of finance, it's the language of air traffic control, of popular music, diplomacy. English is everywhere. Now, Mandarin Chinese is spoken by more people, but more Chinese people are learning English than English speakers are learning Chinese. Last I heard, there are two dozen universities in China right now teaching all in English. English is taking over. And in addition to that, it's been predicted that at the end of the century. Almost all of the languages that exist now, there are about 6,000, will no longer be spoken. There will only be some hundreds left. And on top of that, it's at the point where instant translation of live speech is not only possible, but it gets better every year. The reason I'm reciting those things to you is because I can tell that we're getting to the point where a question is going to start being asked, which is why. Should we learn foreign languages other than if English happens to be foreign to one? Why bother to learn another one when it's getting to the point where almost everybody in the world will be able to communicate in one? I think there are a lot of reasons, but I first want to address the one that you're probably most likely to have heard of, because actually it's more dangerous than you might think, and that is the idea. That a language channels your thoughts. That the vocabulary and the grammar of different languages gives everybody a different kind of acid trip, so to speak. That is a marvelously enticing idea, but it's kind of fraught. So it's not that it's untrue completely. So, for example, in French and Spanish, the word for table is, for some reason, marked as feminine. So la table, la mesa. You just have to deal with it. It has been shown that if you are a speaker of one of those languages and you happen to be asked how you would imagine a table talking, then much more often than could possibly be an accident, a French or a Spanish speaker says that the table would talk with a high and feminine voice. So if you're French or Spanish, to you a table is kind of a girl. As opposed to if you are an English speaker, it's hard not to love data like that, and many people will tell you that that means that there's a world view that you have if you speak one of those languages. But you have to watch out because imagine if somebody put us under the microscope—the us being those of us who speak English natively. What is the world view from English? So, for example, let's take an English speaker up on the screen. That is, it's Bono. He speaks English. I presume he has a world view. Now, that is Donald Trump. In his way, he speaks English as well. <laughs> <laughs> and here is Ms. Kardashian, and she is an English speaker too. So, here are three speakers of the English language. What world view do those three people have in common? What world view is shaped? Through the English language that unites them, it's a highly fraught concept, and so gradual consensus is becoming that language can shape thought, but it tends to be in rather darling, obscure psychological flutters. It's not a matter of giving you a different pair of glasses on the world. Now, if that's the case, then why learn languages? If it isn't going to change the way you think, what would the other reasons be? There are some. One of them is that if you want to imbibe a culture, if you want to drink it in, if you want to become part of it, then whether or not the language channels the culture, and that seems doubtful, if you want to imbibe the culture, you have to control to some degree the language that the culture happens to be conducted in. There's no other way. There's an interesting. Illustration of this. I have to go slightly obscure, but really, you should seek it out. There's a movie by the Canadian film director Denis Arcan, read out in English on the page Denis Arcand. If you want to look him up, he did a film called Jesus of Montreal, and many of the characters are vibrant, 
funny, passionate, interesting French Canadian, French speaking women. There's one scene closest to the end where they have to take a friend to an Anglophone hospital. In the hospital, they have to speak English. Now they speak English, but it's not their native language. They'd rather not speak English, and they speak it more slowly. They have accents. They're not idiomatic. Suddenly, these characters that you've fallen in love with become husks of themselves. They're shadows of themselves. To go into a culture and to only ever process people through that kind of scrim curtain is to never truly get the culture. And so, to the extent that hundreds of languages will be left, one reason to learn them is because they are tickets to being able to participate in the culture of the people who speak them, just by virtue of the fact that it is. Their code. So that's one reason. Second reason, it's been shown that if you speak two languages, dementia is less likely to set in, and that you are probably a better multitasker. And these are factors that set in early, and so that ought to give you some sense of when to give junior or juniorette lessons in another language. Bilingualism is healthy. And then third. Languages are just an awful lot of fun, much more fun than we're often told. So, for example, Arabic, Kataba, he wrote, Yaktubu, he writes, she writes,、um, Uktub, write in the imperative. What do those things have in common? All of those things have in common the consonants sitting in the middle like pillars. They stay still, and the vowels dance around the consonants. Who wouldn't want? To roll that around in their mouths, you can get that from Hebrew. You can get that from Ethiopia's main language, Amharic. That's fun. Or languages have different word orders. Learning how to speak with different word order is like driving on the different side of the street if you go to a certain country. Or the feeling that you get when you put witch hazel around your eyes and you feel the tingle. A language can do that to you. So, for example, the Cat and the Hat. Comes back, a book that I'm sure we all often return to, like Moby Dick. One phrase in it is, "Do you know where I found him? Do you know where he was? He was eating cake in the tub. Yes, he was. Fine. Now, if you learn that in Mandarin Chinese, then you have to master it. You can know I did wear him. Fine. He was tub inside, gorging cake. No mistake, gorging, chewing. That just feels good. Imagine being able to do that for years and years at a time. Or Have you ever learned any Cambodian? Me either. But if I did, I would get to roll around in my mouth not some baker's dozen of vowels like English has, but a good 30 different vowels, scooching and oozing around in the Cambodian mouth like bees in a hive. That is what a language can get you. And more to the point, we live in an era. When it's never been easier to teach yourself another language, it used to be that you had to go to a classroom, and there would be some diligent teacher, some genius teacher in there. But that person was only in there at certain times, and you had to go then. And then was not most times. You had to go to class. If you didn't have that, you had something called a record. I cut my teeth on those. There was only ever so much data on a record or a cassette or even that antique object known as a CD. Other than that, you had books that didn't work. That's just the way it was. Today, you can lay down, lie on your living room floor, sipping bourbon, and teach yourself any language that you want to with wonderful sets such as Rosetta Stone. I highly recommend the lesser-known Glossika as well. You can do it any time. Therefore, you can do it more and better. You can give yourself your morning pleasures in various languages. I take some Dilbert in various languages every single morning. It can increase your skills. Couldn't have done it 20 years ago when the idea of having any language you wanted in your pocket, coming from your phone, would have sounded like science fiction to very sophisticated people. So, I highly recommend that you teach yourself languages other than the one that I'm speaking. Because there's never been a better time to do it. It's an awful lot of fun. It won't change your mind, but it will most certainly blow your mind. Thank you very much. Okay, what did you get from the video? Super interesting.
Okay. Because you come away from this idea that to learn a language is only a thing to access um, another culture or opportunities uh, for working. Yes, it is more uh, a necessity to, like he said, to invite another cultures. If you want to to travel, to know another cultures, and to make you really, really well understanding, it you need to know the language because language is culture. I I I I found fascinating was what he was telling about also uh, to learn a language means to keep healthy your brains and to keep away from dementia. So to be bilingual, it's it is a a wonderful thing, you know, for your brain health. I found it very 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 nice. Very good, perfect. Thank you. Any other comments? In my opinion, teacher, in general, I agree with him. But I believe that the the specific reason the why is more difficult for uh, each person to learn other language depends of the other details um, for example each person has a specific style for them uh, the other point uh, may maybe mention that what is your need, needs mm -hmm. what is your Necessidad, yes, need. needs. Yeah, needs. What is your need to learn? Because it's a motivation when you have a a big necessity. Necessity, yeah. <laughs> you must <laughs> learn uh, faster, <laughs> faster. And in, in my opinion, the Salvadorians people we for. It, it depends on generation too, teacher, because the new generation, in my opinion, for them is easier to learn uh, the new language because in general, the, the, uh, the social network, the video games, for example, now, um, the new generation share with the other culture, with the, with the other uh, language and practice, more practice, more practice, and, and enjoy, in, in, enjoy that. It's not the, you must be learned. No, mm -hmm. enjoy because share information, share time. <laughs> but in, in general, I, um, I agree the TikTok, but I believe that depends of each person what is the reason, the real reason why it's more difficult to learn English, including. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. So, yeah, you are very right. Uh, yeah, we are different. Um, emotional intelligence tell us that one, right? So, Sometimes we're very nice to do something. For example, for me, it was very easy to learn English. That was natural. I mean, I understood everything. But if you tell me I'm an address and I have to go to that direction, I get lost. I don't know where. Maybe I went to your house and then next time I, that I go, I call you and I say, I'm lost. I don't know where am I. So that happens as well. Wait, so, teacher. Wait. <laughs> well, nowadays technology helps you in that one. And I, I find that very, very good because in the past, for me, that was a nightmare. But that happens. I mean, we're different. And for uh, also, also, and that's why sometimes I bring videos like this. We need to understand who am I? 
and what is the best way for me to learn. I know that I, as a teacher, I bring some methodology. You can see that I change. Sometimes we read, sometimes we all, all just speak, sometimes you speak only. So there are different ways. But then it's you also that you need to understand what do I do? How can I learn better? I mean, do you need to write everything? Do you need just to speak? Do you need to watch videos? Um, there are different ways and not all the ways are for all the people. So depending on who you are, you will be able to improve in this way or in this way. Susana. Thank you, teacher. Like when, when he say, we have in our pocket many language and we don't, we don't there because, because we don't aprovechar, how do you say aprovechar? Take advantage. Take, take advantage these opportunities and the tools we have. That was very interesting. Yes, you are right. I mean, not only about the languages. I mean, you can learn about anything. And it's there in your pocket. If you want to learn about, I don't know, the galaxies far, far away, or if you want to learn about animals or plants or how to cook or how to um, whatsoever. Uh, nowadays, we have that. We have the possibility just to take out your cell phone type something. I mean, there are a lot of applications nowadays that it's going to be easier for you to, to do some. So uh, that is true. And it's, it's very interesting. I mean, we need to use that, that one. Manuel. Yes, teacher. Uh, I, I understood. Uh, well, uh, there was a two parts in the video. Uh, please help me. The first is uh, when when the presenter uh, showed the photo of Mono, the uh, Donald Trump and, and, a, and a girl. I, I don't remember mm -hmm. the, the name, but uh, the Bono. I I I, I know I know. Uh, he 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 doesn't uh, an American. I I I I I'm not sure, but it's uh, Australian or uh, how do you say Suecia? Actually, he's from Ireland. He's Irish. Ireland. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for sure, uh, the the three people speak in English. I, I think that I didn't understand what 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 were the comparison what were the comparison, but I think the three people have a different accent. But, uh, however, it, it's in English. Uh, they they talk, but and the second part for me where. It, in, in video, it shows uh, the different advices that, uh, for example, uh, the platinum, platinum uh, CDs mm -hmm. or disc, and the next uh, was as a cassette. And the last one is an, our generation or nowadays is a, a cell phone, tablet, the computer. But the the for me the in this last part is is there are no uh, excuses to uh, uh, I I remember uh, before they uh, it shows the different advices he mentioned it, go to go to the classrooms remember and. Yeah. Important because this is the first uh, way uh, to 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 now and, and then below below the, the the different ways to 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 learn. But for me, is uh, is important uh, to 
to have the intention, not the only the intention, but the desire to to learn because at the at the beginning he mentioned the the English is everywhere. Right? Very <laughs> so, good. In China, in China, he mentioned it. Uh, I don't remember this exactly, but he mentioned it. He thirty universities in China. Uh, they are uh, teaching teaching English. Yeah, yeah, that is so true. And you mentioned something very important, actually. Yes, we need to want. We need to desire learn. English, right? Other languages, in this case, English. Because, yes, as um, Anna Selmy was saying, we have different needs, we have different purposes. But at the end, that is that it has to be the one. If you really like the way that you're going to express, communicate, or read, or anything like that, it's going to be easier, right? If you enjoy. If you enjoy, of course, it's going to be very, very, very easy. And the comparison on the first part that is also interesting uh, is because, I mean, one is an artist, very nice person who knows about many things. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, well, he, a lot of American people, they don't like Donald Trump. They believe that he is not a good person. And the other girl, she is famous because of nothing, because she's rich and she's a model and she, and that's it, right? So uh, they use the, the English to communicate but they see the world in different ways. They don't see the world in the same way. And that's why he was saying, uh, learning English is not going to change your mind. I mean, you are not going to become Bonner, but you are going to become Donald Trump. But you are going to get into the culture. And that is true. For example, I remember when I was learning English, and then I started watching movies in English, and there are some jokes that you understand only in English, right? When they translate into Spanish, it's kind of weird. You don't, you don't get it. It's like, but when you hear the jokes in English, it's like, oh, that is funny. That is good, right? So the same happens. The same happens. When you go into the culture, uh, any other culture, I mean, language is very important. Not only the words that you use, but also the intonation, many things. For example, if you speak with people in Spanish, uh, with people in Argentina or, or in Colombia, you understand that they have their own culture, their own way of feeling. And then you, if you speak more and more with them, you feel that way. So the same happens with language. So it's a very interesting point. Good. Any other comments? Nobody else says. Ah, Susana, you were going to speak. I can only say, um, if you think thinking that people uh, speak and write um, many language. Yeah, that is interesting. And I think it's a, it's a, a good capacity. For it's learning. not easy. Yeah. I know a person that she speaks eight languages. Uh, it's difficult. I mean, uh, you say I, English polyglot. Uh, that is a very good question. To be honest with you, I don't remember, but I'm going to check into that right now. But I mean, now that you are finishing your English classes, let me ask you something. Do you believe that English is difficult? Uh, what do you think? You repeat the. The question, teacher, please. Actually, the word is polyglot. Yeah. And uh, uh, the question is, now that you, you are almost finishing the, the courses, what do you think? Do you still believe that English is, is difficult? Or now do you believe that it's not that difficult as, as you thought at the beginning? What do you think? For me, teacher, English is difficult uh, because uh, I consider uh, uh, I I don't already found the, the, the best way 
uh, because you 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 mentioned it, uh, that there are many different ways uh, reading speaking uh, listen listening uh, but I think it's a, a it's itself to to find the the best way uh, to become easier to to easier way to 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 learn uh, maybe fast to 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 learn but uh, for me is is difficult teacher okay very good i think and um, in <clears throat> it is a fact that uh, to to speak a language fluently it is for me only a question of practice and you to and you get under the influence of the of the culture where this language is speaking and I, I think it is also a question of uh, of how of, often do you be, you get in contact with this language for example i um, i am very blessed i speak very good german i am fluently in german but I arrived in Germany when I was 17. Ooh, a, a, a long time ago. Yes, when I was 17. And you know, uh, less than one year in German is quite difficult, more difficult than English. Yeah. And uh, it was really uh, not easier, but it, it went faster than for me in English. And uh, it was only because I was every day in contact with the language, with the people, you know, with the culture. And it all, okay, I went to the university there in Germany, but it was more a question of how to adapt yourself and you let your thoughts tunnel in the language. He had talked about it, you know, yeah. from a day to other, I was... Uh, I started to dream in English. Yeah. <laughs> yes, from one day to yeah. other. I, I I didn't know when I started to dream in English. And it was uh, in German. And it was really in, in English. I, I, I have experience only, uh, I have experienced it only one time when I was in England. And after that, I had forgotten to dream in English. You know, it for me it is more a question to be in constantly contact with the language every day. Yes, in my opinion, teacher, it's not easy, but now I believe that it's possible to improve with more practice, more practice, and for example, you are bites related to the try every day, the, the translate, the specific sentence during the day in, in English. He tried to, to um, practice, practice, practice. I believe that it's not easy for me. It's not easy to learn the English, but I believe that now it's possible to improve every day. Very good, perfect. Yeah, and you are right. I mean, uh, my very she mentioned something very important. I mean, the best way for anybody to learn English is to jump in another country because the experience you have with the German is exactly what happens. I mean, if you go, imagine that I take you into a plane and get you in New York and leave you alone. I mean, you need to do something. You need to learn. You need to understand. And you are going to understand very, very fast because you are surrounded by that all the time, 100% of the time. So definitely that is going to help. 
Eh, Susana. I like the English. I really like it. And my problem is the time. I come home very tired. Very tired. And, and I think it's not possible for me. I don't make the time. I don't make the, I don't have the correct for going, going. And sometimes when you really like something, it's more easy learning. Definitely. So yes, uh, that is something that you really need to do. If you want to learn, you need to find something that you enjoy and do it in English. I was telling you myself, uh, my experience. I mean, I never went to English classes. I learned by myself. But I really loved music. And, uh, well, actually, I, I bought a guitar. I, I learned to play the guitar by myself. And uh, I just I used to sing the songs and translate the songs and understand the songs. And then I was speaking English because I enjoyed what I was doing. So that is something very, very important. Everybody can learn in different ways. I mean, that worked for me. But I can tell you that you are going to learn English if you sing every day your favorite songs, right? Depends on many things. But what you need to do, I mean, you know, there is a, an obstacle for you to learn English. The, the biggest obstacle is Spanish. Stop thinking in Spanish. That is it. Force yourself to think in English all the time. Too much Spanish. Yeah, I mean, it's it's difficult because we're here, right? You are going to speak with people. and But if you go little by little and you start thinking only in English, only in English, and get vocabulary, research a little bit more, I mean, there are many things. I, I had a friend that he learned uh, vocabulary by posting the words in every in the apartment, all the words in English. This is like this, this is like this, the pronunciation is like this, and he learned English. I mean, your mind is powerful. Go ahead. It is possible that our grammar in Spanish is not good? So no. Complication, teacher. Uh, that happens. That happens, definitely. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, it imagine happens. a person that, uh, yeah, imagine a person that can, they, they don't know about grammar in Spanish, and I say, this is the grammar is, is the same as in Spanish. I mean, that is that is difficult. But it's not your case. Uh, I believe that what you need is just to practice, as uh, my best says. Practice is the most important. It's like driving a car. I mean, you go to the first classes and every, I mean, the teacher, they teach you. This is for you to start, the brake, the everything, all the parts of the cars. But after the first class, you don't know how to try it. You need to practice. That's the best way. So find, find a way, find the time. And yes, I mean, applications are important, uh, videos are important, but your mind is the one that has to change from Spanish to English. That is it. Another experience I want to tell you is about my son. Uh, I, I was teaching English, you know? I, I say, okay, you are 10 years old and you are going to learn it. Just come here and, and I was teaching like a regular class and he was bored. He was like, my goodness, this is not for me. And I said, well, I'm going to stop because I don't want you to hate English, right? But one day he came to me and he said, uh, you know, he really likes video games. And he told me, this video game is amazing and I want this. And, and I said, okay, when is going to be the release of the game? And, and it was like four or five months in the future. And I say, okay, I will give you one dollar every day if you speak only in English, not Spanish. If you say one word in Spanish, you lose the one dollar. Now he speaks English very well. I remember one time that one person knocked on the door and he was speaking in English. What do you want? And he said, oh, I forgot that it's Spanish. So that is going to happen to you. But you need to change your mind. That is very important. Okay, my friends, this is the class of tonight. Do you have any questions before we finish? No, teacher. Good. So we're going to check the attendance and then let's go to bed. I don't know if it's raining where you are, but it is raining. It's going to be a very good night. 
So, Ada Patricia Linares Galdamez. Presentice. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Alejandra Michelle Hueso Nájera. Ana Selmi Chévez. Present teacher. Good. Edwin Alexander Ayala Erazo. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdamez. Here. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present. Good. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Present. Good night. Good. Good night. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present. Good night. Good night. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. For you is the one of one of tonight, Rosa. Silvia Suleima Rodríguez de González. Present teacher. Okay, okay, very good. Good, thank you. Present. Susana, okay, thank you. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present, sorry, teacher. My internet is for but uh, it was today. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. All right, and Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present teacher. Perfect. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night. Rest very really well. Huh? Yeah, present. Ah, okay. My very... computer, my internet PC, I don't have a okay. <laughs> Very good. Don't worry. Okay, so have a very good night. See you tomorrow in Dreaming English. See you tomorrow. Good night. Have a good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Hello, Michelle. Do you have any questions or anything that you want to check? <laughs>